I'm Melanie Bloom, and I'm here in support of World Thrombosis Day, 10 year anniversary. I am the widow of David Bloom, who was an NBC correspondent who lost his life to a blood clot covering the war in Iraq for NBC. So I'm here to talk about David and his life and legacy and his experience with thrombosis. When David was at the height of his career with NBC, he was covering a lot of world events and world news. He had been to many dangerous places, covering fires, floods, hurricanes, wars. The list was long, and he had quite a storied career at that point. But this did feel like the most dangerous assignment of all, to be sent to Iraq to cover the war. And basically, he had this technologically advanced sort of idea of reporting live from the battlefield as it unfolded. He really thought it was important to tell the true story of these soldiers. And so he dreamed up this idea of what became the Bloomobile, which was sort of a rugged utility vehicle with a big satellite ball attached to the back of it. Basically what we've done is we've established the ability to transmit live from this vehicle using a pretty sophisticated camera which can uh, be outside the vehicle and take the, the bumps and the jars. It was very compelling and a, and a very uh, advanced and almost revolutionary way of getting the news at that time. So David tried to call home as often as he could from the desert during the war and he had a satellite link and about two days before he passed, he called home and he said that he'd been having leg cramps in his legs because he'd been traveling across the desert, seated in a vehicle or sleeping even with his knees pulled up to his chest night after night. So we didn't know that actually those leg cramps were a warning sign that something was very, very wrong. And sadly, that night, in the middle of the night, I got the phone call from NBC News that he had lost his life in, the, in Iraq and that it was due to a blood clot. David was only 39 years old and in the prime of his life, doing what he loved and doing it well and uh, that this could take him down. In the bitter irony is that his risk was the war that was raging around him and that in the end, I've referred to it as the bomb that lied within his own body that he didn't even know was there, that he couldn't protect himself from. After his death, an autopsy revealed that he had Factor V Leiden, which is a blood clotting disorder, and he was fully unaware, as we all were, that he had that condition. After his death, I had our three daughters tested and unfortunately, all three of our daughters have Factor V Leiden. So they all have a risk as they go through life for developing a blood clot. If David had known that he had Factor V Leiden, that if he had known anything about the risk of blood clots, he would have been the voice, no question about it. He would have talked about it. He would have been trying to drive awareness about this condition. And part of his legacy that I've tried to continue on is to be his voice and to tell his story, be his voice, and amplify the voices of the hundreds of thousands of other people who are affected by thrombosis-related conditions their whole lives. So many people worldwide deal with this on a daily basis and lose loved ones to thrombosis-related events. And I would really strongly urge them to know they're not alone, reach out for support with friends, family, and also an organization like World Thrombosis Day. There's a wonderful support system there and resources. And learn more about this condition of DVT-PE so that you can also be more prepared and help those that you love and also talk to others who have experience the same kind of loss to give support and encouragement. There was just an outpouring of love and support that was really both touching, moving, and overwhelming, and very healing, that really helped us get through the most awful experience, really, of, of their young lives, and certainly of my life. And 
with friends and family and faith, healing does occur and time. And it, it took a long time before I heard the girls laugh again. You know, it's really hard to see your children grieving and to see that light go out. And I say that the hardest day of my life was getting that call that David died. Actually, that's the second hardest. The hardest thing I've ever gone through is telling our three girls that they lost their dad and that they'll never see him again. After five years, I was very fortunate to meet a wonderful man, Dan McNulty, who had gone through a similar experience. He had lost his wife 10 years before with two young children. And we found love and a new beginning with each other and we blended our families. I joke that we're like the Brady Bunch. We brought all these kids together. And so that was really a wonderful and magical uh, gift that really showed me that life can and does go on. It's kind of been a beautiful thing for us. After 20 years, my hope is that I've been able to honor his passing, honor his memory, and create an, an ongoing legacy and I've tried to carry that on by informing people about what took his life. I've gone from never having heard about DVTPE to everywhere I go, someone shares a story with me, their own story. And I've literally received letters from people saying that David's story saved their life. And there's really nothing better to honor David and his life and his passing than to know that through that, he has been able to save other people from this very condition. And that's really a beautiful way to honor his memory and to create an enduring legacy for him.